Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Toned In Entertainment, where we're talking all things pop culture. Today, it's time for our final discussion of the WCW comic book series. And I made sure I came in theme. I mean, I've got my WCW Monday Night Nitro shirt on. And of course, I'm equipped with the very last issue, issue number 12. We've got Big Van Vader on the cover. Not to tell you guys, it's kind of a bittersweet moment. I mean, I am a little sad that this is the final WCW comic book I'm ever going to get to do a video on. But at the same time, I'm really happy that I have all 12 issues and I've been able to make these videos for YouTube now in 2019. And guys, it's been a ton of fun. And since we're talking about WCW, I want to show you guys what I recently picked up here. I actually got an original copy of the NES version of the WCW video game. Yes, it has the game inside. It has the instruction booklet. It has everything. I'm super excited that I own this. And come WrestleCon uh, in Tampa in April, I'm hoping I can get the signatures of most of the guys that are at least still alive on this box. I'm really excited for this. So guys, make sure you subscribe here to Tony and Entertainment if you haven't. And let's get on with the discussion of the WCW comic book issue number 12. Now this issue starts off with a massive 450 pound Big Van Vader making his way down to ringside, being accompanied by the legendary Harley Race. At the commentary booth for this issue is Jim Ross and Jesse the Body Ventura. JR reminds us that Vader was seriously injured several weeks ago, so I guess that's why we haven't seen the big man at all during the whole ghoul slash black stinger saga. Jesse Ventura's prediction for the match is that Vader will come out on top after having gone through Holly Race's school of pain. As fans bombard Vader with trash, the body reminds us that this could be the most dangerous match of the Stinger's career. But the body's main concern seems to be that if Vader wins, how will the belt fit around his massive waist? Now the WCW champ, the Stinger, who is finally free of the ghoul's mind control, makes his way down to ringside saying, it's great to be back. Jesse Ventura says that if Sting was smart, he'd get himself counted out or DQ'd so that he won't lose the title. As soon as Sting hits the ring, he goes on the attack, nailing Vader with his Stinger splash. But Jim Ross points out that it has no effect on this monster, and it really only angers him as Vader begins to start slapping the Stinger around, and then he crushes his ribs into the turnbuckle. Vader charges at Sting like a rhino, but the champ is able to get out of the way just in time. Sting begins to ponder what it will take to stop Vader, as the legend seems to be true that he feels no pain. Sting climbs up to the top rope, but Vader lifts up the Stinger with ease like the reenacting a scene from Dirty Dancing. After a massive slam, Vader crunches Sting with a big splash. The body says, bring out the maple syrup, Ross, because Big Van Vader's serving up some Stinger pancakes. But Vader isn't done inflicting pain yet, as Harley Race eggs him on, hurt him, beat him, make him beg to give you that belt. Vader lifts the Stinger up by one hand with ease, and Harley Race yells out, do it now, plant him like an azalea bush. And as Sting gets slammed to the ground, Harley Race says, Sting's been to the school of pain, give him his diploma. The body asks, what's that smell? Could it be a new champion? Well, it just might be as Vader crushes the Stinger here with his Vader bomb. As Vader goes for the pin, you can see the fear in the Stinger's fans' eyes as they count one, and then two. And as the ref counts three, the Stinger's fans are in disbelief. Vader and Harley Race walk away from ringside as Vader is now the new WCW champion. Now, while reading this, I was in shock. I mean, we're only on page 10 of this 31-page comic, and we were going out on a bad note. I mean, the Stinger has been through so much. It surely can't end like this, can it? Now, back in the ring, the medical staff is trying to put the Stinger on a stretcher. Now, I'm starting to believe that there might not be a bright light for the Stinger after all. But Sting stands with dignity and leaves on his own two feet. And just showing how fans can turn on their favorite wrestler so quick, one yells out, Get out of here, ya has been. Now Jim Ross here puts out a disclaimer that the following videotape might be offensive to some viewers. Jim Ross goes on to say, just remember that Polly Dangerously's opinions are not that of WCW. Now we've got a massive two-page spread and we've got Polly Dangerously and Stunning Steve Austin really doing their best to shame the All-American Ron Simmons. 
Now, outside of this abandoned building, you can see homeless people sleeping on the street and crime scene police tape. Now, Paulie and Stunning Steve go on to mock Ron Simmons. First, with Paulie saying, Filth is in the air, filth on the walls, filth in the streets. Stunning Steve says, This ain't Lebanon or Beirut or even Bosnia. Nope. Paulie replies, we're here in scenic Warner Robins, Georgia, home of the All-American Ron Simmons. The stunning one goes on to say, it's hard to believe that someone who came from such trash has the audacity to challenge stunning Steve. Paul E says, well, obviously the only way a guy like Simmons could get out of a slum like this was to steal a car. Stunning Steve replies, only problem was he locked his family inside with the keys and had to break a window to get them out. Ha ha ha. And Paul E finishes up with, that's nothing. For Halloween, young Ron Simmons would dress up like somebody with a job. Ha ha. The tape goes on to show Paulie heckling a homeless person, asking them what he knows about Ron Simmons. Now, what I think this illustrator is trying to imply with the text here is that this homeless man is intoxicated and slurring his words. And he goes on to say that Ron used to steal his shoes, then he'd sell them for wrestling lessons. Paulie and Stunning Steve now enter the apartment where he says, this is where Ron Simmons would come back to after hanging out with the winos all day that he shares with the other 37 Simmons family members. Here we see 11 other family members sitting on a beat up couch watching their 25 inch non-cable TV propped up on a stack of newspapers. As you can see from the illustrations, they're implying that Paul Lee has dubbed over Ron's original interview with the voiceover saying, my rotten family ain't got none of my money and I ain't paying no taxes either. JR comes to Ron's defense saying that the voice was somebody else's and those people posing to be his family are actors. The body tells JR to lighten up, it's funny. Now we get a flashback of the Dangerous Alliance jumping Barry Windham in the back before he was scheduled to have a match with Ravishing Rick Rude. But even though they may have gotten the jump on BW, he still end up getting the win that night. But even with that victory, Barry Windham still wants to inflict some more pain to Rick Rude and the Dangerous Alliance and challenges them to a bunkhouse brawl. Paulie accepts the challenge and says, they say everything's bigger in Texas, Barry Windham, and Rude says, then just wait until you see your hospital bill. The rules of the match have been laid out by the body that essentially there are no rules. Jim Ross says that WCW officials have now made this a tag team match and that Rick Rude will be teaming with Steve Austin and Barry Windham will be teaming with Ron Simmons. Rude and Austin make their way to ringside first, donning those phony Dangerous Alliance titles. Next, making their way to the ring is Barry Windham and Ron Simmons, but they're bringing some toys with them. When the bell rings, Ron doesn't hesitate and hits the Ravishing One with a spear. And then Ron and BW tie up Stunning Steve Austin to the ropes, giving new meaning to the term TV taping. Of course, you can't have a match with the Dangerous Alliance without Paul e sticking his nose into the match. Paul E hands Rick Rude his brick phone, which he uses to smash Ron Simmons over the head with. As Rude drops an atomic drop on BW, Missy Hyatt is distracting the ref, while it looks like once again, Paul e is up to no good in the background. But Ron Simmons stops them in their tracks, throwing powder in their faces. But Rick Rude has a trick up his sleeve and grabs some ketchup out of Grandma's hand and splashes it in BW's eyes. Rick Rude hits a super kick on Ron Simmons in what he calls right in the Jay Leno. Now I think they're taking a shot at the then WWF here with this whole Widowmaker comment that Barry Windham is making. If you were following wrestling back then, Barry Windham went by the moniker of the Widowmaker when he was in the WWF just four years before this comic book. This CO2 will lay a Widowmaker on those creeps as he grabs a fire extinguisher and sprays Rick Rude and Steve Austin with it. While the majority of the fans are all excited by the action, one fan gets into the action a little too much as a woman wallops Barry Windham over the head with a shoe. Rude and Austin sees this as a chance to double team Ron, but the All-American isn't having it and double clotheslines Paulie's boys. Ron and Barry grab some goodies from their box and nail Eaton and Rude with some wood, respectively. A fan yells out to Ron, nail him again, and he obliges, nailing Austin and Rude with pipes. But you know Paulie always has plenty of tricks up his sleeves as he tosses a chair into the ring. Austin cracks Barry Windham with a chair, but he only gets the two count. Austin then grabs perfume and sprays BW in the eyes. Simmons tosses Rude to the side and then gets into his football stance and clobbers the stunning one and gets the three count. Backstage, Missy Hyde is interviewing the new champ. Vader says, 
Congratulations, Sting. You've graduated from the School of Pain with flying colors. I've left you with nothing but your pride. Cross me again, and I'll take that, too. And now we come to the last two pages of the WCW comic book series, pages 30 and 31, and I think we are gonna get that nice ending after all. Back in the locker room, we see a bum Sting sitting all alone. He thinks to himself that he's a big loser, and there's only one thing to do, and that's to hang up his tights forever. But at the right moment, Bobby Sanders again makes his way back to the locker room. I mean, seriously, who does this kid know that he's always getting backstage? Well, it seems like he snuck backstage again, bringing another birthday cake. He tells Sting that everyone else wants to see the champ, but he still wants to have that birthday party with the Stinger. Sting reconsiders hanging those tights up as he doesn't want to let fans like Bobby down. Now Bobby reveals yet another birthday cake. As Bobby makes a wish, Sting says, looks great Bobby, is that chocolate cake? Bobby says, yes Sting, it's chocolate cake. Sting replies, good, cause I love chocolate cake. All right guys, well, we're all wrapped up here. This will be the final video because this is the final issue of the WCW comic book series. And I have to tell you, I had a ton of fun going back and reliving the early 90s of WCW and doing this comic book series for YouTube. It was an absolute blast. And if you've missed any of the videos, there's a link to the entire playlist below. And there's some really cool moments here in this comic book series. But hey, guys, don't fret because we're not done with wrestling comic book discussions. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of what I've recently picked up here. Now I have an entire stack of new wrestling comics and I do have some more on the way, but I'm just gonna give you guys a little preview of some of the comics coming in the future. I mean, we've got The Undertaker comic book series, and yes, I have the complete series for this one. We have The Ultimate Warrior. Now, this is a four-issue series. I've got three of the four right now, so I do want to make videos for this one. I love The Ultimate Warrior. This Mankind comic is actually just a one-shot, so this could be an easy one to do. Hold on, we're following here with our comic books. We've got a Hawk and Animal comic book. I believe this is only two issues, and I just had issue one come, so now I have issue one and two. So guys, look out for this one in the future. And we've got a King Kong Bundy comic book series. Which one I'm gonna start with? I haven't yet decided, but guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button here for Toned In Entertainment, because we're gonna have future wrestling comic book discussions coming in the future. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Go now. Do it now.